Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host and also known as the Private Money Authority. If this is your first time to join us on the show, I want to give you a special welcome. Here on the show, we talk about everything involving real estate investing from single family houses to storage to land deals to commercial to also uh, new strategies and services that help you find motivated sellers. Well, if this is your first time to the show, the reason I'm known as the Private Money Authority is because from 2003 to 2009, I was funding all of my deals with the local bank and mortgage companies. And like the rest of the world in 2009, I got cut off with no more funding, no more lending overnight. And so within two weeks, I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money and I haven't missed out on a deal since. So if you're interested in learning how to get all the funding for your deals, regardless of your credit, then you can go check it out after the show at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Well, if you've been tuning into the show on either iTunes or our YouTube channels or Google Play or Amazon Fire or wherever you are finding out about us, you know that since we launched the show way back in June of 2018, we have phenomenal guests and experts here on the show, and today is no exception. I'm so excited to have my friend and my business colleague and fellow Mastermind member, Mr. Caleb Pearson, is gonna be joining me here on the show. And before I bring him on, let me tell you just a little bit about him. He's originally from Franklin, Virginia, but now he's a fellow Carolinian down in Charleston, South Carolina. He's been in real estate, uh, or been in the real estate business ever since he graduated from college back in 2012, which is downright disgusting. Caleb is not nearly old enough to have enjoyed the amount of success that he already has. I wish I knew what Caleb knew when I was his age, but nonetheless, he was a very successful basketball player on the college level there in Lynchburg, Virginia. And in fact, he attributes a large part of his discipline and his success today comes from being in college uh, basketball. Well, anyway, Ever since graduating, he has been a serial and is a serial entrepreneur. He's uh, created multiple successful streams of income and businesses. And for example, I mean, right now, he's got the uh, Remax brokerage and he's number one. Yes, I said number one in the state of South Carolina. So what an accomplishment there. On top of that, He's got a wholesaling fix and flip team that does about a hundred deals a year. So he has got the multiple stream model dialed in. He's also one of the owners of a service called zoomoffersnow.com, zoomoffersnow.com. And as a matter of fact, that's what we're going to be talking with Caleb about on the show today. So with that, Caleb, welcome to the show. Jay, thank you for having me on. Absolutely, man. As I mentioned to the folks a second ago, we enjoy being in uh, the same mastermind group. And we were just talking about how that crowd that we hang around has got the utmost integrity, spiritual based group of people. And, you know, people here on the show that tune in, they've heard me say birds of the same feather flock together. And so with that, you being one of my guests, that means you're a, a guy of high integrity and, and value base. So I'm glad to have you here on the show, Caleb. So you've got this company titled zoomoffersnow.com. What is Zoom Offers Now? Yeah, so um, Zoom Offers Now is actually, an, it's a piece of software that makes making offers through the MLS faster. Let me back up a little bit. The, the way I kind of got it started was I was going on, I had my Remax team and I was going on probably 30 listing appointments a month. And out of that 30 listing appointments, I'd meet with, I'd just, let me call it two to four sellers that were just super motivated to sell their house. And then I started thinking, well, there's four or 5,000 active listings on the market. How many truly just very motivated sellers are there that are that have their own house on the open market that that I don't know who they are and how I, how can I get an offer in front of every one of them 
without having a VA or without sitting down and individually typing up offers to blast out to these agents. So I was actually having a drink with a friend one night at the bar and told him about my idea. And he said he knew a guy that knew another guy that basically could build software. And we told him about my idea and tens and thousands of dollars later, we had it built and um, had bugs in it and we fixed it over time. And we used it in our business for about a year before we started um, pushing out in other markets. So what year did you start the beta launch on this software? I'd say it was about two years ago. So 2017, 2018. I got you. So first of all, who is this software for? What type of real estate investor would get benefit from this, uh, from using this software? Really anyone that's buying and closing on homes or wholesaling. If you're looking to build a rental portfolio, we found that those guys are picking up the most amount of deals every month because they can pay a little bit more than your average wholesaler and fix and flipper. But we've gotten some really, really good deals from it. Gotcha. So you just said something interesting, Caleb, you said from wholesaling. So a person making these types of offers don't have to have the funding lined up to take it down. Are you saying they could wholesale it to their buyer's list? They can definitely wholesale it to their buyer's list. We closed on one last week and made, uh, I think the wholesale fee was about 15 grand, but it was on a deal that was listed in the MLS for about 370. We offered 230 on it, negotiated to like 235 and then wholesaled it for about 250. Good night. It was listed for 370. Yep. And you got it under contract for 230 or 235? 235. You just, you never know what someone was, will take for a house without getting offers out. And what the software does is it basically, let's say I, I want to pull up every house that's in the MLS that's been on the market for more than 90 days. I mean, those sellers have been showing the house or not getting show ones and they're starting to get a little frustrated. I can siphon it down to that many active listings and then I can about in about 30 seconds and three clicks, I can make an offer at call it 60 cents on the dollar. It'll auto populate the offer, sign the offer for me and send it to the listing agent as an, an attached to the email, just like any other listing agent would send an offer off, out. And then basically we've got someone that sits in the office and fields counter offers all day. Holy moly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so let me drill down on this. So, all right, so let's, let's drill down on, on this particular, uh, this particular case study that you're talking about. So it was listed for 370, you negotiated it, got it under a contract for 230. What was the criteria? That, I mean, if, if you don't mind spilling the beans, what's the criteria that, I mean, does the software look for the possible deals or do you put in the, the search criteria in the software or what? So you can build whatever search criteria you want and then you can save it. So like in that saved search criteria, I think we had 90 days on the market or longer, under 400,000, under 3,500 square feet with at least two bedrooms. And I, let's call it 1,500 homes came up. And then we can offer out, I think Justin offers, usually he's offering between 55 and 65 cents on the dollar. And he just makes two clicks and it auto populates all those offers and goes out. That particular house, there was like seven siblings involved on the house. They hadn't gotten any offers. It had been on the market about six months and they just, they jumped on it. I mean, they were ready to get paid. That is amazing. Well, you know, I haven't bought a house since 2003 that I didn't make an offer on, right? Sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let's bring it home to my situation. So the, the way that you don't have to be a, do you have to be a realtor to use this software? So you don't have to be a realtor. You've got to have a realtor relationship though. Like in my case, I have my real estate license and I'm an investor. So it makes it easy. And you don't have your license, correct? Correct. Yeah. So in your case, you would just need someone in your market that has their real estate license to represent you on all the transactions. We have to tie it into their MLS. So, well, that, well that's, that's leading to what I was going to ask you. So I've had the same primary realtor relationship that I put all my offers in 
since 2004. I started in 2003. I started this business relationship with this guy named Chris in 2004. And so, I mean, I never make an offer through the listing agent, right? All my offers are put in through Chris. And of course he puts in the offers and for the sake of our audience that's watching and listening to us, you know, the great thing about that part of the relationship is all my offers that get accepted. It's the seller that pays Chris and his brokerage and, and not me. Exactly. Anyway, anyway, so Chris puts in all the offers. So how would Chris, my realtor, be involved in the process of these offers being made? If I mean like in my area, like, so what, what does my realtor do? What do I do as the real estate investor? I, I guess it, it depends. Everybody uses it differently. I mean, Chris's situation, he can pretty much, you can use the app and he can sit back and collect a commission on anything that you ratify. Or you can tell Chris, Chris, I want to make an offer on all of these houses that fit this search criteria at X cents on the dollar. And he can go in and mass offer. Or if you hop on to the MLS and you see three houses that you want to make an offer on and you say, Chris, I want to offer 60,000 on one, two, three Main Street. All he has to do is go in type the address in, click the house, type in 63 grand and it auto populates the offer, signs it and sends it off to the agent. So it will save him, let's call it 20 minutes per offer. Well, he can do it in about 20 seconds. So I know Chris uses the current standard North Carolina offer to purchase. Yep. So how does your software communicate with what say the standard North Carolina offer to purchase looks like today? Yep. So we, we don't provide the contracts. The user provides the contract. So if you sign up with us, we'll ask you for the purchase contracts. We'll ask you for one that's filled out and one that's blank. And then we digitize it basically, basically to where when you go in and click the, the house and type in what you want to offer, it'll auto populate the offer. Oh, so, okay. Well, that answers that question. In other words, like if you don't have a client, for example, in North Carolina, then, well, maybe that doesn't matter either way. But anyway, so I say, okay, so Jay, I want to use this. So Jay wants to use this service. And so I'm going to send you, a, my, Chris is going to send you a blank one and one filled in. Then you all set up the software and then there it's ready to go. And now in the software, are you mentioned an app. Are you putting the information in the app or your realtor is putting the information in an app? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a computer app. It's not on, your, oh. not on your phone. But he just logs into the site, types in his username and password, and just, it's really simple and user-friendly. Gotcha. So what is or are the biggest problems and challenges that this software fixed? It fixed ha tr having to have someone to sit there and individually type up offer after offer after offer it fixed the challenge of me. Basically I can figure out what everyone in the entire MLS is willing to take for their house by putting offers in front of them. So that fixed that challenge. It's almost, it worked as a branding piece too, because you'd be surprised at how many offers we send out to a listing agent and they say, this seller's not motivated, but this one is, what could you pay for this house? There's a bunch of things that I never really thought it would do that we've gotten deals in a roundabout way just because we've put so many offers out into the market. My guess is what a realtor sometimes thinks is the most motivated seller is the opposite is true once the offers actually go out. What I'm saying is regardless of how motivated a realtor thinks a particular individual is to sell their house, people, I mean, even the owner of the property I've discovered, they don't know what they're going to do until they got an offer sitting in front of them. I agree with you a hundred percent. I mean, it's like, you know, we did a deal recently where the owner of the house was an out-of-state owner, absentee owner, lived up in Chesapeake, Virginia. The house was down here in my area. It had been vacant and not habitable or livable for like four years, built back in 1945. The after repaired value was like $180,000. Now it was going to be a big rehab. Here's the thing the least my acquisitionist could get him down to over the phone, excuse me, in person was $60,000. Over the phone, it was 80. In person, it was 60. I told my acquisitionist offer 20. And of course, I was gonna have to put like $80,000 in it in rehab. Uh -huh. And my acquisitionist said, 
they'll never take 20,000. And I told my acquisition is two things because they were still in training. Number one, you have no idea what that seller is going to take until you make the offer. And secondly, you must justify your offer when you're talking with an off market seller and you're not, you know, going through MLS and they took the $20,000 point of the story is we don't know what people are going to do until that offer is actually in front of them. Yeah. So, I agree with you. The, um, the thing is like in our market, we've got 5,000 active listings at any given time. That's 5,000 sellers that have raised their hand and said, I'm willing to sell my house. You, you just don't know which one of those 5,000 is super motivated. And we're not buying 10 a month from the app, but we're buying two to three a month from the app. And if you, obviously it's free for me because it's my piece of software, but we charge $500 a month. It's our second best return on investment piece of marketing, second to text messages. Got you. So yeah, this is just really, really interesting, Caleb. Now, so you, you've got 5,000, just thinking about the number of listings that I've actually got here in my area. So here's another question. Before the offers go out, is anybody on your team looking at the properties? You mean physically going to the properties? Yeah. No. So we always advise anybody that's going to use the app to make sure they put some sort of out clause or due diligence period. So if they lock something up, the numbers don't work when we send somebody out there that they can get out of the contract without any harm. And I will tell you, does it happen? Yeah, I'd say probably about 20% of the time we put something on contract, get out there and just say, okay, no, that's not going to work. Well, you, uh, read my, you read my mind. I was going to ask you, what percentage of the time are you under contract? And by the time you do the walkthrough and the assessment, you're going, no, this ain't happening. Not very often. The Google Street Views are so good these days and the pictures. You, we can usually have a pretty good idea of what we're getting ourselves into without even having to drive to the property. Right, right. Yeah, and any good MLS listing is going to have good pictures as well of the exterior and the interior as yep. well. So that answers that question. You, you got the due diligence period in there. Say you're a wholesaler, like you are. So you, yep. got, a, you got a wholesale team. And let's say you, you get it under contract. And for whatever reason, none of your buyers list takes you down on the property. What's your out on that? Are you just getting out during the due diligence period as well? We usually are. Or if the numbers work, then we'll take it down. But usually, if your buyer's list isn't going to buy it, then you shouldn't be buying it. Right. <laughs> That's what I found. Right. Exactly. That's sort of like having your buyer's list is actually a very, very important part of your team, right? It's checks and balances. A check and balance for, for your team. That's for sure. It's like an appraisal. Right. So if you don't mind sharing, what's some of the criteria or the best criteria that you and your current clients are using for search criteria? Yeah. So our best is the 90 days or, or longer on market. I mean, the like, house, like period, just 90 days or longer. What we found is usually once people get past two months, they start getting pretty frustrated. Three months, they're getting really frustrated and they haven't seen any offers and showings have really slowed down by the time you get three months on market with no offers. So 90 days or longer, we do under 300,000, two bedrooms or more. That's been our best save search criteria. You can also do, we have a save search criteria that's based on keywords. So it'll scrape the MLS and needs TLC, handyman special, needs love, investor special. So those are some of the keywords. And when we put those into one of the safe search criteria, every listing that has that in the notes anywhere will auto populate. That's been our second best performing list. So you'll do that search criteria without the minimum of 90 days, right? You just, just do like those hot, those hot specials. Yep. Correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. So what lessons have you learned so far since using the software? What lessons have your current clients learned from using the software that people should be aware of? Like, you know, they contact you and they're interested in, you know, using the software to find, you know, motivated sellers. What are some lessons learned that you have discovered? A lot of things. It's been interesting. So I built it, like I said, I demoed it with my own team for about a year. 
then I had a friend in CG ask me about setting it up in their market. We set it up in their market and they had different challenges than we did. One of the challenges is there are 7,000 real estate agents in our market. Not all of them are friendly. Um, some of them go wild when you send them an offer at 55, 60 cents on the dollar. So now we built the app to where you can exclude certain agents if you want to. Um, <laughs> just, just so you don't have to deal with them. What are some other things that we've had? You asked the question about the due diligence. That's super important. We learned that lesson. While you're thinking about that, so you said in your area, you got about 5,000 active listings, right? Correct. Uh, what's the population of your target market approximately? Uh, about 800,000. Okay. So you're in a, you're in a big market. How often do you do new search criteria of say, it's been in the multiple listing for 90 days. You check that every week. You check it once a month to send out new offers. How often? So that's a really good question. We do it every day. Usually Justin, who's running the uh, Zoom offers app in our office, who's my cousin, who's licensed, Danny's an investor. He's sending out about 50 offers a day. And the app notifies you every 30 days of the houses that have not been re-offered on. But it also, it, it will flag the one so you're not offering on the same house every day. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, so you check it every day. So I guess every day it tells you the new list of houses that have now hit the 91st day. Yep. And it'll show you the new houses that have hit the MLS, the hot sheet. Gotcha. That's got the hot phrases, right? Motivated. Uh, no, the new houses that just hit the MLS period that day. Okay. Now, why would you want to look at those in the app? Just because it's easy for him to just scroll straight down and see which ones are in a price point or in certain neighborhoods that would be a decent deal or need love. And he just clicks. Let's say it's listed for 100 and he thinks it's a deal. So he'll just click it, type 90,000 send offer and that offer goes out. So he's checking the new ones every day and he's checking his saved search criteria. Now, how does this, you mentioned something a moment ago, how does the software know that a property has had an offer on it or hasn't had an offer on it since you made an offer if it didn't go under contract and went into a pending status? So, the app will tell you if you've made an offer on that property within the last 30 days. Okay. We'll tell you, you obviously you don't know about other people's offers. Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. So how often will you go back in and make the same offer on the same property that it was rejected previously? He does that about every 60 days. So not every month. Right. So, so, if, it, so if it's been on the market for say 90 days, you make your offer. And your offer is, is it typically 60, is it 60, 60 cents of listing or 60, 60 cents of whatever? It's you, he offers the right, usually 60 cents, 60% 60 of list price, the so 60 cents on the dollar. That's interesting that you're doing the percentage of the listing because a listing could be way high or a listing could be low instead of figuring your offer on say the, value of the property as you would see it or the after or the potentially after repaired value. We use the Zillow estimate. I mean, you can make a percentage of it off of that, but he usually just mass offers at 60% of asking price and then sends them out and then fields counter offers all day. But that's why it's really important that you have that due diligence or your out clause in your contracts, because if something's way overpriced and you lock something in at a price that's too high, you, you don't want to be stuck buying it. Yeah. So, so what is his negotiating process since, you know, since he hasn't been there and walked through the, the house or the property, he's sending out offers at 60 cents of list. They come back and counter what's his thinking process on, well, what's the most I'm actually going to offer on this property? Yeah. So that's one of the things that we've learned and that's been a process he sent out like 1500 one day and that just turned into a mess because it was too much for him to manage all the counter offers. But basically when someone counter offers back, if it's not more than 20% below asking price, he usually will just say we can't get there too far apart. But if it's 20% or further or below on asking price, then he'll go back and forth with the agent 
by the pictures, he can usually tell about what it's going to cost and what we can pay for it and why. But he does it all via email. So he's not taking phone calls all day long from these agents. How many uh, offers will he send out now on average in a day or a week? About 50, 50 a day. That's, that's manageable. Now, out of 50 offers, how many, on average, how many counters? you or how, Out of 50, well, you're doing two to three a month that you're actually yeah. buying. But out of 50 offers, so 50 times three, that's 1,500. So you're doing 1,500 offers a month. I'm saying just five days a week. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's 30 days. Anyway, I'm trying to think how many offers you got to send out that you're actually getting a deal. So that's a thousand. Yeah. So about a thousand. So you got to send out a thousand offers to get three deals. It, the more, it really depends on the market. Like we're picking up two to three, but we're in a very low inventory market. Um, we've got a guy in Birmingham, Alabama that he told us about two months ago, he picked up like 11 deals one month. My lens. Yeah. I mean, that's not typical result. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, Caleb, let's let uh, everybody know how to get in contact with you, how to get information on getting the uh, software in their area and et cetera. Yeah. All you have to do is go to zoomoffersnow.com and put in your contact information and click submit and it'll send you a quick demo video of how it works, the pricing sheet and everything. It's really simple. But just go to the website. All right. So everybody make sure you got it. And we'll put it up here uh, on the video as well at www.zoom, Z-O-O-M, offers, O-F-F-E-R-S, now, N-O-W.com, zoomoffersnow.com. Caleb, thank you so much for coming on the show. No, Jay, thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Glad to have you. And any final parting? words before we sign off i don't man i just really appreciate it. i'm humbled being to be on your show all right excellent glad to have you caleb all right folks thank you for joining in be sure if you're uh, on uh youtube or itunes you want to hit the uh, subscribe button be sure and rate and review us and google play all of you we appreciate you being on here i'm jay connor the private money authority wishing you all the best and here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.